guys and girls, it is finally time to stick some wheels and the spoiler on the T5. It's long overdue. I've been a bit ill. I'm feeling brand new. I've been ill for a month, but I'm feeling good. We're getting the wheels painted. The spoiler's already painted. We'll have a butcher's at that in a minute, but let's get into it. Oh uh, yeah. Fresh and shiny. I put a video out. <clears throat> it says he's brand new. Put a video out about three weeks ago asking your opinions on painting the spoiler. It came black, nice and shiny, but I did plan to paint it silver. Put a video out and I'm blown away. You guys, so many people commented on colour choices. Big thank you to everyone who took the time to comment and uh, let me know what you think. Really appreciate that. Anyway, uh, what I didn't mention after, obviously, because I made it happened after. After that video, I rested the spoiler in the box. Spoiler slid out of the box and scratched it, so I had to paint it anyway. Um, but in the comments, I would say 40% of you said to leave it black. 50%, oh, nearly just knocked it over. Just marked it a little bit. Need to stop swinging their hands around. Anyway, 50% of you said to paint it silver, and another 10% said to paint it the lower grey, you know, the, the colour of the lower half. Really like that idea, but I played it safe. I've gone with the majority. Hopefully that mark polishes out. I've just caught it with my nail. And I painted it silver. Looks nice. Anyway, that is the paint spoiler done. I painted it about... Two hours ago, just bloody scratched it. No, that'll come out, that's fine. Uh, need to move this out of the way, but where do you put it? I've got it propped up. I made some little <laughs> screw thread things to hold it. She is precarious, but I can't put it down because I've painted underneath. I don't want... Oh. Well, I need to get this out of the way. Oh, that's really bugged me, that has. And it was live. Uh, that'd be fine, won't see it. Better not bloody be able to see it anyway. So, oh, I can't stop looking at it. Anyway, we need to look at the wheels. Let me show you the wheels. I went for, in the end, I went for some 19 inch wheels for multiple reasons. Nope, for one reason. They were cheap. They were 150 quid, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, 19 inch wheels, they were really dirty. I've got a couple of shots in a minute, I'll show you. Uh, 19s, got them back, went to offer them up and the wheel nuts didn't fit. What's going on here? Looked in the back of the alloy, they're Land Rover alloys. So I got on the uh, Google web search and it's a common thing people use is Land Rover alloys on a T5. You just need to have different wheel nuts and some people fit spacers. I have got the little thin spacers, we'll get them in a minute. Because first of all, when I thought, oh, they're Land Rover wheels, I don't want them, um, I was then just gonna stick them on eBay or stick them back on Marketplace and buy something else. But I've stuck with them. Reason I've stuck with them is they're a Land Rover alloy. I have seen many, many times on this estate cracked alloys, they've got cracks on the inside, and when they crack, the tire obviously goes down. Last thing you want is to maybe hit a pothole in the middle of nowhere, crack two alloys, two flat tires, you've only got one spare, obviously. I didn't want any alloys cracking. I can't afford two grand for a set of top-notch wheels that ain't ever gonna crack. So I went with Land Rover wheels. They're four or four by four. They're, meant, they're, <clears throat> they're pretty stout, basically. They're four or four by four. I've never seen them crack. I didn't mind the design. Do I love them? No, I don't love them, but they were cheap and they will look good with a fresh coat of paint. And they did come with tires, but the tires were balloony, two, three, five, 55, 19. And they came from one of these, literally those exact wheels. And you can see the tires are big. They're a four by four tire. Now I'm not going for the swamper look. I want the 
slightly boy racer look or pimped look, bigger wheels, slight low profile, but not something that's then going to stress the alloys even more because obviously the lower the profile tire, the more stress you're putting on the alloys and that you might crack them. So I went for a 245, 45, 19. So it's plenty of width. They ever so slightly just poke out the side of the Land Rover tire so, uh, alloy so we can bump up curbs. I don't want to go to a shop, pull over at a shop or something like that, then have to like park a mile away from the curb. I want to be straight up the curb and I don't want to be doing the alloys. Um, so stuck with the Land Rover wheels, happy with them. They're going to look good in black. Oh, just giving it away. I'm going to paint them black, but we'll talk more of that when it comes. I need to, I've even taken all the valves out, sorry. I have been rubbing them down. Andy helped me as well, zero budget, Andy. He's helped me rub them down and I like these wheels. Let me get the camera off the stand. Another reason why I like these alloys, can you see the thick lip around the edge? So when you pull up to a curb, Jesus, this bloody floor. When you pull up to a curb or you go near a curb or you have to mount a curb, you're not going to start scuffing the alloy. Worst case, you might just get this lip, which isn't too bad. So we've got like a five mil lip that pokes out the side of the alloy. And when I rubbed these down, I did take quite a bit off this edge because these all four were absolutely hammered. They looked like a sharp... Uh, what was I going to say? They look like a blade anyway, or shark teeth. They were absolutely punted, but I literally hit them on the redneck lathe, spun them up on my wheel machine, hit them with a grinder, then hit them with 80 grit, then 240, then 320, and they are <whistles> silky smooth, and there was just literally a couple of chips. I've done the inside of the alloy as well, got all the weights off. There's nothing worse than painting over weights, so we've got all the weights off the alloys, scotched the inside, cleaned them, they've come up all right. I have rubbed down where the tyre sits, top and the bottom, on the inside, because they were a bit fluffy, they were a little bit corroded. If ever you've had a slow puncher, take it to the garage, can't find the slow puncher, there's no screw, there's no nail, it'll be here. This gets corroded and then air leaks out of the bead of the tyre. So, don't want any slow pungies or anything like that. So I've cleaned them, I even cleaned in here, they were hanging in there. Cleaned them right up, done the edges, done the outsides. Fresh. I do need to put a tiny bit of primer. We've got bare metal, bare metal. I'm gonna spin them up on my machine. I say my machine, it's a handmade thing. You'll see that in a minute. I'm gonna put a dusting of primer on the inside, warm the wheels up, paint them black, outside, inside, outside, shiny. Um, let me get the stand. Oh, let me show you this scratch that I've just done. Where is it? Oh, can you see it? Right there. Oh, hopefully it polishes out. I am wounded. <sighs> let me get the stand out. Oh, look, better look at the spoiler. I'll get the stand out. We'll paint the alloys. And I need to precariously balance this somewhere without chipping it anymore. A little bit noisy in here. I have got you guys propped high up, so hopefully you can see what's going on. This is my wheel painting device. It's a ZTEC flywheel, a bit of scaffold tube, a bearing, spinny spinny. A friend of mine did offer me his four wheel painting system, but it's a Sunday evening. I forgot to pick it up. This will have to do. Um, I've got the wheels, I've got the heat lamp on the wheels just over there warming them up. I'll move it as I go on. I have also put a bit of etch primer. No. I have also put a bit of universal spot primer around the edges of the wheels just for a better adhesion. Um, primer sticks better to bare metal then the paint sticks better to the primer and so on. Anyway, I will I'll do one alloy in real time. I might speed it up a little just in case it gets a bit boring. But I paint the top with a, a gripper coat. Then I paint the inside. Then I paint the top. Shiny. Um, let's get an alloy up. 
and get painting. I'm going to put the microphone over there so it doesn't get too covered. Let's get into it. Ah, just quickly, I am painting with a 2K one stage solid gloss primer, 300 mil primer, no, 300 mil of uh, 2K black, 150 mil hardener, splash of thinners, should be enough to paint all four wheels. Because if it ain't and I get to the last one, I am going to be booing. are freshly painted finished them about 20 minutes ago we've let them sit and they are shiny I am super happy with that um, yeah they have come out well takes a little bit of time you've got to puff it in each of the spokes and then on the back side because you don't want to see through it you don't want any dry spots so it does take a while the more spokes there is painting a set of wheels the harder they are but Check that out. Fresh and shiny. I might get a little grey pinstripe, a little silver pinstripe on the inside of the lip. I don't know. I need to order some tyres. No. I need to order some centre caps. Because obviously you've got to have fresh centre caps. We've got fresh tyres to go on them. I'm going to let these sit for a couple of days. We'll get the tyres on and we'll see how they look. I am pumped on those. Oh uh, yeah. It's the following day. I've done a day's work. I've been for dinner. I've come back for the night shift. Just going to quickly show you something. Check out that rear quarter panel. That swage line's not meant to be in there. That is punted. I need to fix that later. But if I show you this one, this mini rear quarter panel looked exactly the same. This is one I fixed yesterday. The swage line was completely gone. That whole area was punted in. And this bit that meets the arch was about 40 mil inwards. Pulled that out with a dent puller. Happy with that repair. Check that out. Nathan's done a nice job painting it. Happy with the repair on that one. Really happy, actually. Um, getting back into the bodywork. Earning some money. Having a nice time. Happy days. I need to get... The Mini behind me out, I need to get the Nissan, Nissan Note, is it a Note? Blue thing. That needs to come in the booth. Passat needs to go out and sit back there. Uh, Mini is going to be behind it, and then I'll be working in the doorway with the T5, sticking the spoiler on. I need to demask this in the meantime, move all the heat lamps. <sighs> Let me shuffle some motors about, we get the T5 back end in. Micra, I rub the primer down, he's in the booth, Passat is there, Mini is there, had to demask it all. <sighs> anyway, we're done, we're set, we're ready. T5 sat there, ready and waiting, got the spoiler. <whistles> I've used some inner tech double sided tape in a few strategic areas. I offered it up, put it back down a couple of times just to make sure I had the. I wanted to see where it was touching the most, and that's where I put the double-sided tape. And then we've got three splodges of Pureflex. Pure it's a anti... No, it's not. It is a high-modulus PU sealant and adhesive. Just three strategic bits of glue. If the double-sided tape ever starts lifting in the, uh, in the heat of the sun, a little bit of Tiger Seal, basically will hold it in place. And 
because it's here, if I ever need to get it off, I just need to <laughs> with a blade from the front. That's if I ever remember where the glue is. Anyway, I'm going to get the stand out, offer it up, and stick it on. Well, I'm slightly nervous, but with most things, you've just got to get on and do it. Ideally, you've only got one tie. One tie? One tie. You've only got one try. Oh. Come on. I'm square. Two times. Well, it's going to be three times. Oh, it's sticky. That's inner tech stuff. Well, maybe more than one time. If it was the summer, and that double-sided tape was warmer, that would have been it first go. <laughs> like, because it's cold, Let me step back. Yeah, happy days. It's definitely a spoiler. So I'm gonna put some tape just to keep it stuck, even though that is pretty rigid. Um, yeah, happy with that. Wheels are shiny. Checked them out today. And it's gone rock hard. Ordered some centre caps. They should be here tomorrow. Let's skip to then, because I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the wheels. Oh yeah. It is actually two days later. Wheels have gone nice and hard, as in the paint. I, uh, I know my wheel, my wheel? I know my tire machine pretty well. So hopefully, we're not going to scratch the alloy because I would be absolutely booing. Got some new rubber. I actually got two new tyres and two very good part worn tyres. Big shout out to my man at Evotion Online. Sent me out some uh, mint part worn tyres. So if you want some mint part worn tyres, check out Evotion online. And it's an eBay seller. Any tyres I've had from him, they've had no repairs, nothing, they're mint. Uh, valve, nearly, we are getting ahead. All fresh valves, looking sweet. We'll do a bit of real-time footage on fitting a tyre. I won't bore you with all four. Oh! Just been down to another pals workshop. Because I was out of sticky weights for balancing. Now with tyres, uh, they've got a red dot and the red dot goes to the valve. Well that is how that's what Google told me about five years ago anyway. So I've just stuck with that. Now the trick here is to get it close, but not too close. If it's too far away, it doesn't go on too well. And if it's too close, you scratch the, you scratch the alloy. I have got an arm doobery here for really low profiles. You put the arm on, press down on that, goes on easier, but should be able to do it without. Oh yeah, no scratchy scratchy. So 
My red dot is here, my valve is here. Can I move the tire? Oh yeah. Happy days. Tires blow up a bit slower with the valve in. So if you was in a rush or you needed to seat the bead, you could take the valve out and it blows up quicker. But we shall see. Always makes you jump, no matter. Oh wait, nearly. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's nearly, because if you pop the bead and it's still on the tie machine, then you're in a world of pain, nearly. It's Friday, this video goes up tonight, so I am rushing a little bit, and I don't like rushing. Nothing good ever comes from rushing. Stuff always goes wrong. Um, I do stand back a bit, because it makes you jump every time. Bottom one, top one, you could be looking right at it and it still make you jump. Oh my God. I'm gonna put 45 PSI in them. That must have been the outside and the inside B going at the same time. No scratches. I do have fresh center caps, happy days. And I have some wheel spacers and new wheel bolts. They're only 10 mil wheel spacers. If you're using Land Rover wheels, if you're using the 20s, it's a bit messy down here. If you're using the 20s, I've heard that they scrub on the inside, on the rears. I have tried one of these on the T5 and they didn't scrub, but I didn't drive anywhere. So I went for 10 mil spacers and bolts. Right, I need to get all four wheels in the T5. We're in my workshop, I'm sure you can tell. It's messy and small. I'm gonna get down the other workshop. It's a bit bigger. So I need to balance all these on my balancer, get them in the van, get them down there, show you the wheel spacers, and let's get these wheels on, because I'm excited. Um, it looks like a spaceship with the wheels on. They're really sucked in. These are a lot wider, nine J's, 10 mil spacers. They're gonna look sweet. Let's get down the other workshop. All four wheels balanced nicely, happy days. Uh, to fit the Land Rover wheels, I have got some spacers. You don't have to get spacers, mention this. I've only gone for 19s, but I've got some spacers anyway. 10 mil thick, and they are hub centric, so they keep it all nice and straight. And they come with 10 mil longer bolts, and these special little washer collar things 65 quid for two. So if you want a full set of four, you need to get a pair of two or a pack of two, four spacers, 20 wheel nuts, 20 collar things. I am ready. Um, get the jack over. I need to wash it. I haven't washed it in like two months since I painted it. So we're gonna stick the wheels on, get it outside, wash it and have a better look. I'm looking forward to seeing how these look. Um, it's gonna be good. Let's get into it. giving it a wash for the first time in two months after the paintwork. 
wheels are looking really good. I am happy with those. They fit really well. Spoiler's looking good, happy with that too. Um, let me show you the offset, i.e. the width with the spacers. Absolutely perfect. They've filled the arches completely. They're not poking out at all. They are almost spot on with the 10 mil wheel spacers. Let's go on the other side, it's a bit less windy. Yeah, really happy. And let's talk about tyre size. 245, 45, 19 on a 9J Land Rover rim. Absolutely perfect. The tyre sits out just a tiny bit. So if you have to go near a kerb, it's going to protect your rim. If you'd have gone for the 235, or if I had, they would have sat inside and you would have scuffed the rim. So I'm happy I went for the 245 width. And then with the 45 profile, which is that bit, it's perfect. Any smaller, they would have looked like rubber bands. Any bigger, they would have looked like off-road tyres. Um, really happy with the tyre size. Really happy with the wheels in general. And the van, absolutely loving it. Spoiler, is quite big. We went in silver, um, happy. It's not sticking out too much, uh, i.e. being black. It's, uh, it's big enough, silver. I'm happy with how it looks, I'm happy with the colour. It would probably look good, that colour though. A lot of you did mention it. We need to work on the inside. It's still, let me show you, in fact. It's still just a bit of a wooden van inside, a um, bit of a panel van. Need to make it nicer, carpet line the walls, bit of lino or carpet on the floor, and just trim it out and make it nice. But that is a video for another day. Let me just show you the back end of the van with the spoiler on. It completes it, if you ask me. Looking really good, happy with that. Really happy, in fact, uh, happy days. A set of wheels can really make any vehicle, whether it's a car or a van. You could have an old shed. You stick a set of wheels on it, looks absolutely pucker. It is surprising what a set of wheels can do. Um, gonna give it a bit of a tidy out. Gonna order some, uh, some carpet lining, all the interior stuff. I'm gonna get some more of that insulation from B&Q dial, is that what it's called? Good stuff. Gonna order all the bits, that'll be next week. We're gonna get on with Andy's van again, zero budget resto. Um, plenty to do, finally feeling better again so we can get on with it. Uh, yeah, happy days. Absolutely pumped on the van, really am. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys. I'm out.